In this second video about Llama Index, we're going to be exploring more of its functionality going over four files. We will also be exploring some interesting logging dynamics, both using info and debug to get additional information such as token usage. Also how we can store the indexes to disk as we did in the last video and also how to actually name the indexes. And also how to use a support vector machine to get similarity results. This was an idea apparently Andre Karpati came up with and he actually have a GitHub repository comparing KNRS Naples to support vector machines to retrieve similar text chunks. He says that support vector machine training works much better and Llama Index actually allows you to set a query mode with support vector machines along with linear regression and logistic regression. We're going to be taking a look at that and also we'll be taking a look at how to use Llama Logger to get additional information and how to use pprint to print in the terminal nested forms of data structures so we can actually see their format so much better. So let's just begin. Our first example is pretty simple. We set our OpenAI API key. We use Simple Directory Reader to read the data, which is Stephen partially Stephen Hawking's partial Wikipedia article. Then we create an index in memory index with the GPT vector index store query engine. We set it as the query engine and we just ask a question. When we run this, we get an answer and we print the response. So to query over documents with Llama indexes can be as simple as this. And we simply get an answer using similarity search and OpenAI embeddings alongside a VIG index and vector stores. Our next code is interesting. It'll actually write the index to the disk and automatically load it. So we first try to load this index. If not, we create it and store it into disk. But here is the login, which is really interesting. This is the syntax to write it. You can actually have logging for info or for debug for additional information. And this will actually display everything that is happening behind the scenes. Let's run this with the debugger real quick. I'm going to press F5 or you can come to the debugger and click on this run and debug. So here we're just setting with the logging information. We are importing all necessary imports that we're going to use load index and storage context. As you see, we are already seeing some of the outputs from the info, as you can see. Then we are trying to load it from the disk, but we don't have that index stored in the disk yet. We haven't persisted it, so we skip the try and go to the accept block. We load the data from the data folder. We create an index. And while we created the index, as you see, we have used 5,444 tokens for embedding. So we have used five this many tokens for embedding purposes. And now we're going to persist this to, the, to a directory. And when we do that, we have stored the doc store. Here we go. This is our index. And now we're setting our query engine. And now we're going to get a response. As you see, now we're using six tokens. These are the tokens that correspond to our query, what is Hawking famous for. And now we're going to print the response. And we have used 1,294 tokens for large language model usage. Now we're going to print it because we have, we did use this many tokens because we have put all the relevant chunks from our document to and send it to a large language model. In this case, text DaVinci 003. And now we print the response. Hawking is famous for his scientific works. You can also set this login info to debug and get so much more information. It has to be capitalized. I'll let you I'll let you try that. I'm also going to have all this code available for my Patreon supporters. My Patreon, I have almost 70 exclusive posts with code examples and whatnot. So if you do decide to become a Patreon supporter, you can actually download the codes for many of my videos. Next, let's move on to how we can use the support vector machine. Before we do that, I just want to mention my website, the Kohai AI Academy, from which you can watch, search and watch 130 plus free AI coding videos. I read their descriptions, also find code download links to Patreon if that interests you. Take a look at echohive.live. Link will be in the description along with my Patreon link. Okay, let's continue with our third file. We, every, most everything is same with this file, except when we come here after we have either loaded or created the index, which we have already done. We set a query mode to support vector machine SVM. We can also choose linear regression, logistic regression. I'll let you actually try those out. We're going to use SVM in this video. 
Then we set the query engine, index as query engine, and vector store query mode to query mode, which is going to be support vector machine. Then we actually query over it, just using what was Hawking famous for. Actually, for this to work, when I first tried this, I was getting an error message, uh, and I had to modify the utils.py file from utils uh, from llama index. Actually, this line right here at log vector store query results uh, function. If we go back and actually use the original file, you'll see what the error message was about. I'm just going to run this real quick. See, we're getting the value error, truth value of an array with more than one element, element is ambiguous. This is the line that has given us the error. And I did some research and got the help of GPT-4. And the thing we need to do is modify this utils.py file. You, you can actually access it by looking, going to this directory or control clicking on it. When you control click on it, Visual Studio Code will open it. And at this point, you need to modify this line to this one. You just have to add a conditional to, to check. And then after that, it should run just fine. And we are also going to be looking at when we are running. Actually, let me set some breakpoints and run the code in debug mode. When we, we are actually going to get formatted resources. Also, you can also get the source text using the dot sources by, by getting the corresponding indexes from the get formatted sources. We'll be, once we print this, it'll become clearer. We are still using the logging, so we get to see our usage and the information that Llama index allows us to print the terminal because we are using uh, logging right here. Okay, so now we're just going to print the response. We're doing line by line execution. So this is our response to what was Hawking famous for. Now we're going to print our formatted resources, response.get formatted resources. Here we go. This is our formatted resources. So it's a bit redacted. We have two sources with the doc IDs. You can actually find them, find these in your doc store. Also, you can see the IDs right here as well. And then next, we are going to print the source text of the first one. Here we go. This was the source one. Okay, and then now we're going to print the second one, and this is source two. So these are the two, two that two simulated sort two two chunks that simulated the search return from our original document. Now let's move on to see how we can use the llama logger to get more information. Again, like I said, all this code will be available to my Patreon supporters. Uh, link will be in the description. So to use the llama logger, here we define it. We first have to import it along with service context, and we actually. Uh, assign it the llama logger to it service context is dot from default and it accepts an argument called llama logger which is the one which we have just defined rest of the code is the same we define our open ai api key set up logging do other necessary imports load from our storage persisted index or created then we set our query engine as index as query engine and we you, it accepts a service context we give it that service context to it which we have defined on line 9 we do say similarity top k is 2 so this is going to return 2 chunks you can actually play around with this and increase it or decrease it to 1 for example it also has a response mode called 3 summarize but I'm going to make a future video about how to do, how does llama index handle summarization anyway after that we just query what the talking do growing up we get the response and then we're going to log them I'm just going to actually put a break mark breakpoint over here and run it with the debugger with F5, or you can run it from with the run and debug right here. So at first we're gonna print the entire service context that llama underscore logger dot get logs. Now we are on line 48. Let's print that. As you see, this is quite the long text. And it's a list of elements, which is also which also contains a dictionary. It's a formatted prompt template, and this is actually the prompt. And with our injected content information, it says context information is below, and these are the context information. After that, it says given the context information and not prior knowledge, answer the question, which is the question we ask: What did Hawking do growing up? These are inserted to the prompt dynamically, and then we get another key for the initial response. And this is actually our answer. So this is the print statement from this. So to get a better idea, we're going to import pprint and then we're going to assign to pp, pprint, pretty printer, indent for. So we can actually print this data structure and get a sense of what it looks like better. 
we're going to define logs as what we have printed right here. Okay, service context, llama logger dot get logs. After that, we're going to print this entire logs. And now this is quite a long document, but now we can see it's structured much better. It's a list, it's a dictionary within a list. This first key is formatted prompt template. And the second key is initial response. Now this would suggest that we should actually print initial response key of the first element. But unfortunately, for some reason that I couldn't quite understand, we do have to print the second element. But anyway, but it is the initial response is the key. So when we print that, we do get the response such like this. So the cool thing is that now if you have access to this data structure, you can do whatever you like with it, right? You can parse it and you can use it in like future calls to the LM. So I thought this is something worth mentioning. So this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be making more videos. I really find Llama Index uh, very exciting and we'll be talking more about it in future videos. If you like this kind of concepts and you like to build apps around large language models, please come to Echo Hive Discord channel and chat with us with like-minded individuals. I hope to see you there and take care. I just want to mention a Echo Hive AI Academy. You can visit it at echohive.live, from which you can search all my YouTube videos, 130 plus free AI coding videos. You can search and find exactly what you need if you're searching for GPT-4 or GPT-3.5. It's an instant search and you can actually find the right content, read the descriptions along with the code download links to Patreon. Feel free to use it. It's echohive.live.